Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In the video today, we're going to talk about um, logic app solutions. We're going to talk about inline functions versus function apps and the, the sort of new feature that came in with um, logic app standard allowing us to use inline functions now that are part of the application. And we'll discuss some of the pros and cons about um, function app versus inline functions. Um, before I jump into the content of this video, um, a quick thanks to Serverless360 who are helping me um, grow the channel and providing a little bit of support. So they have some great features around things like um, cost analysis here, helping you look at um, reducing your reserve bills and then features like these about helping you improve the support of the solutions. Um, so please go and check the, uh, go and check their products out. Now, I'm going to um, set the scene here where we've talked a lot in the past about an enterprise integration platform. And there was a number of places that um, Azure functions would appear. So we see in data transformation, helper functions, and then business rules. So there was a few, um, a few different use cases where functions would be quite helpful to us to put some C-sharp code, or maybe you were using another language and your logic app would call that function and it would kind of just help you put put that little bit of code somewhere where you could execute it. Now we always had this idea of inline code for JavaScript, but um, I think it was just beneficial for people to be able to use C Sharp, especially in the um, VizTalk migration customers and people who were using Azure integration services, because C Sharp was a language they're much more commonly using. Uh, but I think that there was also some limitations around the inline JavaScript code, which the new uh, Logic App feature for C Sharp um, kind of opens that up so you can do more stuff with it. Now, if we think about what this looks like, so let's throw a new slide up. So how we've typically been building these solutions so far is we'd have our function app over here, and we'd put a, we'd put a few functions in it that would do different stuff. And then if you were a, um, a Logic App consumption or ICE customer, you'd be building all these Logic App workflows over here. And some of them would call some of these functions. And then you maybe would have another function app and you'd have a bunch of functions here. And we had these, these scenarios where I think commonly you would have a couple of patterns of functions. So you might have ones where there were... Um, like generic helpers so so you maybe had things like um so you had a function that would look up from the logic app run history and error message i think sandra and i have blogged about that that would be like a common sort of function that many you uh, many logic apps would use so that would be common functionality maybe you'd encapsulate some common logic used by lots of different workflows you would then also have these kind of um Let's call them a workflow specific one. So you might have um, a logic app that needed a bit of code. It would call over here, but that that function here would only ever really be used by that one logic app. It wasn't common functionality that would be used by other other logic apps. Now these these workflows in consumption and ice would be obviously very individual as your resources, and then. Along comes Logic App Standard, and now you've got this big Logic App, and you've got multiple workflows in it. And then obviously we've had the ability for these workflows to consume a function as well. And that's been around for a little while now. And then obviously the new feature is really that I can now put a function here. Excuse the spell mistake there. And then these workflows can just call this function. Now, the problem is, is that function is embedded inside that logic app. So this scenario here, that's not really going to work. It, let me red cross that one. So really, the, this is really about these internal workflows calling this function. So that now gives us a question about, well, if I'm building a logic app standard, do I put my function here? Or do I put my function over here in a function app? Now, there's a couple of pros and cons to this. Um, so let's just throw another slide up here. So to me, um, if, your, if your function is going to be common 
functionality, then you're going to want to have function app. So to me, that means um, multiple logic apps. For um, So that's going to be multiple logic apps or workflows are going to be calling it. It's going to be potentially used by consumption and standard. So they would be some of the common cases that you would um, go to a function app. You've then got um, specific functionality. So to me, the question here is, is it is it standard logic apps or is it consumption logic apps? So if it's standard, these are the perfect cases for inline functions. So that would be, um, if I've got, got that scenario where I've got a bit of code that's only ever going to get executed by one workflow, putting that, if you're in logic app standard, putting that as an inline function, that's perfect. Um, if it's going to be used by multiple workflows across different logic apps, this is going to be where you're going to want the um, function app here. Um, if it's going to be used by consumption, then you're probably better off putting it in a function app as well so that it can be used by standard and consumption. Now, there is a couple of other things to think about um, in this scenario as well. So if you're, if you're using a function app, um, so if we think we're going to use a function app here, we've got, you know, these logic apps with their workflows. We've got another logic app here. So if we've got these call and all these over here. So the things that you need to think about in this function app scenario. So number one, you're going to have to think about the authentication. So you're going to have potentially you're going to want to think about managed identity here and here and then validating that managed identity. Um, out of the box, you've got the scenario where if you're doing the function app call, it, it can use the um, the function keys as well. So you've got, um, if, you, if you're doing the function keys, this is where the connector kind of auto-magically behind the scenes gets the key to call the function, especially if it's that, um, you know, that's how it worked on consumption for a long time, but supported in standard as well. So if you're using the function key, um, you know, a lot of people are going to want to prefer to use move from function key to managed identity. And then here, um, you can have managed identity support on your logic app standard. But if you are on consumption, you can still use managed identity as well. You're going to want to think about um, line of sight. So, say firewall. Line of sight. So, if you're consumption, then you're talking to this function app, but you're not going to have network integration on your consumption logic apps. So, you're going to have some restrictions on how you can lock down your function app here. Whereas, if you're on logic app standard, you've got a whole bunch of extra scenarios about network integration. So, you could maybe do like a private endpoint here, and you could do um, VNet integration here. And you could kind of like put that all on a private network and stuff. So there's a whole bunch of extra features become available in um, in Logic App Standard for talking to a function app that weren't available in Logic App Consumption. Now, the key thing is if we take the the Logic App inline functions. So let's remember this scenario here where we've got our Logic App, we've got our workflow. And then we've got our function here, and that lives inside the boundary here. So this call from here to here, you kind of don't need to worry about that authentication, and you kind of don't need to worry about that firewall because it's internal on the node inside the application. So actually, one of the biggest benefits of the, the inline functions is that there's a lot less complexity um, because all of these these kind of cross component scenarios they just go away, and you're really just thinking about this this in, internal code call here. Um, so that's a big win. One one of the things I might ask Kent about this, to be honest, um, I'm not sure. Like if you're because that function exists in the function app, can you call into that function directly? Most of the time we're seeing, you know. A, like a tester or a user or something's calling into the workflow into the logic app to execute something or whatever but 
can you actually hit that function directly as well if you if you had like a key for the logic app or something or you had approved authentication i think you you know when we look in the logic app um in the azure portal we don't see you know we'd see the workflows listed um in the portal but you wouldn't see um you wouldn't see the functions listed so i'm not quite sure whether those functions are available or not it's something i'll probably check on into after the video um, but hopefully there's a bit of thinking there about um pros and cons of the inline function versus the function app to me when i think about integration platforms built in the past we often would end up with quite a lot of function apps having that scenario on the previous slide where we've got this specific functionality where you just need a helper function to me you know the, the more we can get rid of function apps that were created for this purpose and move towards inline functions and logic apps standard for them that that's a real win because it reduces our footprint on azure so we've got fewer resources i think the, the other thing to think about maybe i didn't quite touch on this here is in addition to authentication and firewall you also have things like hosting um so we we don't have to think about which which plan is it a consumption standard app service plan the function app lives on and that kind of thing so we're just getting rid of complexity getting rid of azure resources that we don't really need that's a green light for me for inline functions um these common functionality so if let's uh highlight this one this common functionality where you're going to have multiple workflows across multiple logic apps or you're going to have logic app consumption use of it that's the case where i still think you want a function app and, and a function app's a good thing to have i just think there's a big benefit with inline functions of getting rid of as many big function apps or having lots of function apps and using inline functions so for me big thumbs up that i really like inline functions for those correct use cases hopefully this gives people some thinking on where to choose to use them and where to still use a function app instead and um, thanks for listening today today's video and um, hope everybody has a great week